How fast will a chemical reaction occur? If a reaction is too slow, it may not be practical. And if a reaction is too fast, it may be dangerous. So measuring and controlling reaction rates makes it possible for chemists to make a wide variety of products in a safe and economical manner. In this lab, we will investigate how to measure the rate of a reaction and we will experimentally determine the rate law for a reaction. We will be measuring the rate of this reaction. Now normally this reaction is somewhat slow at room temperature, but ultimately the reaction rate will depend on the concentration of the reactants. So we will be adding potassium iodide, potassium bromate, and hydrochloric acid in different concentrations and compare the reaction rates at these different concentrations. This will help us write a rate law. One problem with this reaction though is that we can't see the products being produced and we also can't see how fast they're being produced. So we are going to do a second reaction as our way of measuring and timing. The second reaction takes the iodine from the first reaction and reacts it with a known amount of sodium thiosulfate. When the thiosulfate gets used up in the second reaction, the iodine will start reacting with starch that we also add to the solution. The iodine and the starch create a complex that's dark blue. So we will know that when all of the thiosulfate is used up, we will see a blue color start to form. So you will start your timer as soon as we add the bromate to the solution and you will stop your timer as soon as you start to see the blue forming in the solution. This means that all of the thiosulfate has been used up. We will use this time and some stoichiometry to calculate the rate of change in the concentration of the bromate ion. We will carry out the experiment by combining the iodide ions, the hydrogen ions, the thiosulfate ions, starch, and enough water to make all of the volume levels equal. We will then stir our reactants and add potassium bromate last. If we know the rate of the reaction and we know the initial concentrations of all the reactants, we can write a rate law for this reaction and ultimately calculate the rate constant in this equation. So this is what our reaction setup looks like. We have a 0.010 molar solution of potassium iodide, a 0.10 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, a 0.040 molar solution of potassium bromate, a 0.0010 molar solution of sodium thiosulfate, a 2% solution of starch and distilled water. We will combine these ingredients in differing concentrations and we will do five trials of each different series. So here's our ingredient list for series one, which takes place at 20 degrees Celsius. You can see the potassium bromate is highlighted. That indicates that we will add that last. So let's begin. I'm gonna use a micro pipetter to add 50 microliters of 0 0.010 molar potassium iodide. Then with a clean tip, I'm going to add 50 microliters of a 0 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid solution to each of my five trials. Now I'm gonna add 25 microliters of the 0 0.0010 molar sodium thiosulfate solution. 25 microliters of starch, and 100 microliters of distilled water. This just ensures that we end up with 300 microliters of total solution. The next step here is I'm gonna stir each micro well gently. This will combine all of the ingredients. And the last step is to add the potassium bromate. Now once I add the potassium bromate, you're going to need to start your timer. As soon as you see that reaction start to turn blue, stop your timer and record the time. We are going to do five trials for each series and calculate an average of the five trials.
So hopefully you stopped your timer as soon as you saw that first little bit of blue showing. Write down your time, clear your timer, and get ready to start trial two.